Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the arrogant arsonist. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12 ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. One of the most despicable of all crimes is the malicious setting of fire. Vilest of all criminals is the professional arsonist. We go back some years to a winter evening in Berlin, Germany. Two men stand back from the crowd, watching the firemen fight their hopeless battle against the flames swiftly devouring the large building. The small man smiles proudly and turns to his uniformed companion. Exquisite. Exquisite, eh, Mr. Dietrich? Yes, Graz. Very beautiful. Did you ever see such wonderful flames? They dance like the lovely girls of the ballet, eh? Graz, tonight will be a turning point in history. I have no interest in history, Mr. Dietrich. I am an artist, but with good business sense. Now that my work is done, there's the matter of the 50,000 marks. You have earned your money well, Graz. When you put the torch to the rice stock, you started a flaming symbol that will rage for years to come. That was February 27th, 1933. The infamous Reichstag fire in Berlin. And though Hitler's Germany has since been crushed, sparks of that fire still smolder. The greed and ruthlessness that started it still survive and flourish. Three weeks ago in Tangier, North Africa, Carl Dietrich, still calm, still arrogant, waited in his sumptuous office. Your phone call to Wolf in New York is ready, Mr. Dietrich. Thank you, Nina. Hello, Wolf. Dietrich. Uh, did, uh, did you get my message, Mr. Dietrich? Yes. Miss Campo decoded it properly. Ah, then I'll go right ahead and destroy the account books as I said in the message. You'll do nothing of the kind. But, but, Mr. Dietrich, the federal grand jury meets here in New York at the end of next week. They're going to investigate all exporting companies. So you said, Wolf. They'll subpoena our books. They'll have a record of all the transactions. Don't let it worry you. But don't you see they'll find out that my exporting company is just a, a dummy for supplying your combine with potential war materials? Just leave it to me, Wolf. Oh, what can you do, Mr. Dietrich? You're thousands of miles away. I, I'll be ruined. I, I'll kill myself before I let them put me in jail. Wolf, stop talking like an idiot. I'll handle everything. I'm taking the first plane for New York. Attention, Mr. Harding, statistical appointment. Mr. Harding, in statistical. Please come to communication section immediately. Urgent code radiogram just received from Tangier. Oh, 
Peters, switch that message to Channel 4. Just the speed of the turntable. Eh? Right, Mr. Harding. These electronic decoders the laboratory boys developed certainly save time, and we have to decode in a hurry. Oh, hold it, Peters. You started from the beginning. Agent Ropes and counter spy transmitter LC4 Tangier, North Africa, to Harding, headquarters, Washington. Carl Dietrich and his secretary, Nina Campo, left here by plane, 1500 Tangier time. According to passports, their destination is New York. Investigation shows Dietrich's departure was hasty and unexpected. It followed an overseas phone call with New York. That is all. That tip you passed along the grapevine to Eric Wolf in New York worked, huh, Dave? Looks that way, Peter. He certainly pegged Wolf for the jittery type. He smells trouble, and right away he sends for Papa Dietrich. That was a smart stunt not to pull Wolf in for questioning. Well, Wolf's only a small cog in Dietrich's setup, Peter. He's just a man who ships the supplies to the Marshall Plan countries. And you want the big boys, Dietrich? Yes. It's Dietrich who engineers the trick of getting such war potential items as oil, steel, and chemicals transshipped to his customers and nations outside the Marshall Plan. Well, it looks like we'll be able to reel in the big fish now. Yeah. As long as Dietrich was operating from his Tangier headquarters, he was out of our reach. Now all we have to do is nail him when he steps off the plane in New York. Well, I'm not having Dietrich picked up, Peters, yet. Hmm? Dietrich's a shrewd operator. We need direct evidence against him. So we go to New York, Dave? That's right, Peters. We go to New York and we stand by until Dietrich and Wolf give us the evidence we want. J-12 to Mr. Harding, New York field office. Go ahead, J-12. Dietrich and secretary Nina Campo registered at Hotel Tremont. Suites 1803 and 1804. Eric Wolf was waiting for them in lobby. The three have just entered Dietrich's suite. That is all. Walt, you'll join us in a drink, huh? Mm, uh, no, no, thank you, Mr. Dietrich. You, Nina? You, Dr. The usual, Mr. Dietrich. Mr. Dietrich, the grand jury convenes at the end of the week. Yes, Wolf, I know. Ah, how can you be so calm? I have a calm nature. Uh, I won't have a chance. My books will... Oh, they'll expose everything. I'll be finished. Something's got to be done. You've got to save me, Mr. Dietrich. I haven't said... Well, stop that disgusting whining. Here's your drink, Nina. Thank you, Mr. Dietrich. Wolf, don't you realize I have as much to lose as you have? More. You think I ran the risk of coming here just for pleasure? I have millions at stake. But if our account books are taken before the grand jury, they... Let me worry about those books, Wolf. Ah, that should be Gratz, the gentleman I'm expecting. Nina, let him in, please. Of course, Mr. Dietrich. And Nina. Yes, Mr. Dietrich. Keep that door to the foyer closed in case it is not right. Certainly. Hello, Nina. God. Well, come in. Why are you dressed in overalls? It was Dietrich's idea, precaution. I'm posing as a hotel utility man. And Mr. Dietrich's in the other room waiting for you. And you, Nina? This will give you an idea. Oh, Nina, darling. We shouldn't take chances like this. God, how long do I have to go on working for Dietrich? Nina, you took the job with Dietrich, so we'd have inside information on anything especially good. But what's wrong with his knowing about us? Then Dietrich wouldn't trust you. If we're going to get what we want, he must have complete faith in you. Nina, darling, I promise you, after this deal, we'll have enough money to be free of Dietrich forever. Now help me with these overalls. I'd better get inside. Oh, Rat, come in. I want you to meet Mr. Wolf. This is Mr. Gratz. Mr. Wolf? How do you do? A pleasure. Wolf, my old friend Gratz is going to attend to your account books. He's going to destroy them. What? Destroy them? Well, that would give us away. You said so yourself. <laughs> I believe you have a supply of kerosene oil on hand in your warehouse. Uh, yes, for export next week. That kerosene is not going to be exported. Not... Your but... warehouse is going up in smoke. I had Gratz come up from Argentina especially for the assignment. Gratz, 
specializes in fires. The Reichstag was my masterpiece. Tomorrow morning, Wolf, Graz will visit you at your warehouse. He will pose as an insurance inspector. He will show me through the building, and I will select the best way to approach the problem. The evening after next, Wolf, your warehouse will be destroyed. An unfortunate accident. But, uh, Mr. Dietrich, what if they find out it isn't an accident? Wolf, I, Hans Gratz, am a perfectionist. When I create an accidental fire, believe me, it's accidental. Peters in patrol car three to Harding, New York field office. Go ahead, Peters. Wolf just came out of the Hotel Tremont. He visited Dietrich for an hour. All right, Peters. Have J-12 keep on Wolf's trail. Gotcha. Also tell J-9 to stick close to Dietrich when and if he leaves the hotel. And one more thing, Peters. Yes? Assign a man to shadow Dietrich's secretary. I'm curious to see where Nina Campbell fits into this picture. Grant. I waited for you this afternoon at your hotel. What happened? Uh, my work at Wolf's Warehouse took longer than I expected. I was going to call you here at your hotel, but I didn't want to take a chance with Dietrich around. Well, he'll be coming out of the living room in a minute. First, I want to know something. Anything, darling. You said last night that after this deal, we'd be free of him. We will, I promise. But he's paying you only $5,000. Darling, that's not enough money for us to get away and live. <laughs> I have a plan, Nina. A plan that will build that 5,000 into 100,000. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Dietrich. Sorry to keep you waiting, Grant. Did, uh, Miss Campbell keep you entertained? I'm afraid I'm dull company, Mr. Dietrich. I don't think Grant's think so. Do you, Grant? Miss Campbell is always pleasant to be with. Then, you know, you see... Well, Grants, how did your inspection trip go? Excellent, excellent. I'm going back to the warehouse tonight to prepare for tomorrow evening. And uh, Wolf understands what his part is to be? Perfectly. I don't want any mistakes, Grants. Mr. Dietrich, uh, there'll be no mistakes tomorrow night. Everything will go according to plan. <laughs> Telephone with the report for you. Good. This is Harding. Relay J-12 in on circuit 5. J-12, patrol car 4 reporting to Harding. Go ahead, J-12. Wolf left his apartment at 9 p.m. and drove around town for 50 minutes. He just parked his car outside his warehouse. He's been sitting there about, uh... Wait a second. What is it? He got out of his car... Now he's opening the warehouse door and going in. Well, stand pat, J-12. Don't follow him in. I don't want to scare him. Peters and I are on our way down. This may be it, Peters. You think Wolf's going in with the warehouse for his records, Dave? Well, that's the way I expected him to react. If he does take those books out, he may deliver them to Dietrich. Let's go. Late, Wolf. I waited outside a little first. You told me to make sure I wasn't seen coming in here. Is everything ready, Grant? Of course. Amazing. How simply Mr. Dietrich solved such difficult problems. I thought I'd never get out of this difficulty, but soon my worries will be over. Yes, Mr. Dietrich is a remarkable gentleman. Uh, hadn't we better get over to the kerosene drums so you can start the fire? Fire will start right here. With this pile of excelsior. But the kerosene's at the other end of the building, near the office where the account books are. Gratz, we can't take a chance. The fireman may get here and put the fire out before it gets that far. I told you, Wolf, I'm a perfectionist. Nothing can save this warehouse once I put a match to this excelsior. How can you be sure? How can you? My dear Wolf, there are secrets to every trade. For example, look over there on the floor behind you. Huh? What do you mean I don't see anything particular? As you said before, Wolf, 
soon all your worries will be over. You were right. You and all your worries are going up in smoke. Counter Spy in just a moment. But first... Pepsi-Cola, hit the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. The street before the Wolf Warehouse is a black mass of people as three fire companies fight the towering flames. Back of the fire lines, David Harding, in a counter-spy patrol car, with his assistant, Harry Peters, is receiving a report from another agent. Mr. Harding, I was waiting outside the warehouse for Wolf, as you ordered. About five minutes after he had entered, I saw the flames. I tried to get in there to save Wolf, but no go. You better get those burns on your hands attended to, Edward. Right. Chief, I don't get it. Wolf walks into that warehouse, and five minutes later, it goes up like a matchbox. Well, it's got the fire marshal puzzle, too, Peters. That warehouse was equipped with every fire prevention device, including a sprinkler system. The only angle I can see is that Wolf became panicky. He was afraid we were getting too close, so he decided to get rid of his books by faking an accidental fire. But he was trapped in the warehouse. You go along with me? Well, that's a possibility, Peters, but there's also a possibility that Wolf got out by a rear exit. We should have had an agent at that rear exit. Yes, but Dave, you agree with me about the books. Yes, Peters, but I'm holding off any other speculation until we get a laboratory analysis of that fire. Nina, come in, darling. I can only stay a minute, Gus. I told Dietrich I was going for a short walk. He said you told him everything went according to plan. Hmm. Almost. Dietrich said it was perfect. It was, Nina. For us. But not for Dietrich. I don't understand you. I told you I'm going to build that $5,000 into 100000 Remember? Yes. In that fire tonight, Dietrich got only one of the two things he wanted. Wolf's death. Unfortunately, the second thing, the account books... They were not burned in the flames. What do you mean? I removed the account books from the warehouse. They are now right here in my closet. Oh. It would have been a crime to destroy them for only $5,000. After all, Nina, such valuable documents. Really a crime, don't you agree, darling? Yes. Yes. Dieter could pay anything to get his hands on those books, wouldn't he? (laughs) A hundred thousand will be enough. We mustn't be pigs. Oh, Gratz. Gratz, you're wonderful. <laughs> Nina, I can hardly wait to see Carl Dietrich's face when I tell him the price is $100,000. $100,000. And well worth the price, Dietrich, don't you think? $100,000. Blackmail. And to think I once trusted you, Graz. Well, we all make mistakes, Dietrich. Some are more expensive mistakes than others. 
yours will cost you $100,000. And what if I don't pay? How can you afford not to pay? Your illicit trading business is worth millions of dollars to you. Why should you jeopardize it for a paltry 100000 The grand jury meets Friday, Dietrich. I shall give you until Thursday to deliver the money. I got your message to get over here to the field office right away, Dave. What's up? The laboratory analysis on that fire is ready for us, Peter. First, that warehouse was set ablaze by probably the cleverest arsonist in the business. Oh? Huh? Next, the flames spread quickly because of oil in the warehouse. That black smoke, hmm? We guessed that last night. Yeah, but here's something we didn't guess. Our chemist found globules of kerosene oil in the sprinkler system pipes and valves. The sprinkler system was apparently loaded with kerosene instead of water. As the lab reconstructed, the arsonist started a small fire in the rear of the warehouse. The heat opened the sprinkler valves and the kerosene took care of the rest. That's right. A real professional job. Well, now about Wolf. Traces of human bone were found in the ruins. There's no doubt Wolf died in that fire. There's a good possibility he was murdered. Yes. It might have been convenient for Dietrich to get Wolf out of the way. Very convenient. Dietrich would be burning two birds with one match. We can't pick Dietrich up on that rap, Chief. According to our reports, he was in his hotel room all evening. Yes, I know. But there's another... No, just a minute. Harding. J-12 reporting, sir. Go ahead, J-12. Nina Campbell left her room at the Tremont Hotel... She's now visiting room 907 at the Hotel Sergeant. Okay, J-12, let me have a full report when Nina Campo returns to the sergeant. Right. Nina Campo? Hotel Sergeant, what's that about, Dave? Dietrich's secretary, Nina Campo, left her hotel last night, Peters. You think maybe she's the one who put the torch to the warehouse? No. Nina Campo walked out of her hotel at 11, almost an hour after the fire began. Where'd she go? The same place where she is now, room 907 in the Hotel Sergeant. And Peter's the occupant of 907 is a man named Gratz. Gratz? A checkup shows he arrived in New York Sunday on a plane from Argentina. Then maybe Gratz is the firebug. It could be. There's more. J-12 got into the room next to his. He overheard Nino Campo and Gratz making arrangements to meet there this afternoon again. Oh, it's too bad we haven't got a detective phone in there. But we have. I had it installed this morning. <laughs> oh, I might have known. Peters, I'm very anxious to hear the recording of the conversation between Gratz and Nina Campo. There's no telling what interesting things those two are saying to each other. What did Dietrich say, Nina? You'll get the money tomorrow, Gratz. Hmm. That's very sensible of Dietrich. Oh, it's wonderful to see him squirm. <laughs> <laughs> Gratz, are the books still in that closet? Yes, of course. Why? Well, they mean so much to us. I was concerned about your leaving them here. They're perfectly safe, Nina. You could never tell. Nina, except myself, only one person knows where those books are. And I can trust you, can't I? Of course, darling. Always. Well, Peter? Dave, this record winds it up for us. Not quite. Aren't you ever satisfied? Now? Yes, when I'm sure that people like Gratz and Dietrich get what they deserve, the electric chair. Then what's next? Well, that's up to Gratz and the way he feels about Nina Campo. What do you mean? Well, something Gratz said to Miss Campo. He said, and I can trust you, can't I? Peters, I have an idea that Gratz's faith in Miss Campo is going to be sadly twisted. Come in, Gratz. You haven't brought the books with you, Gratz. I have the money ready, but you were to bring the books. I brought this instead. And what do you expect to accomplish with a gun? Hold me up? We'll talk about it in the other room. Move along. Very well. Stand right there. As you say... Where's Nina Campo? Why? Where is she? In the next room. Tell her to come in here. What is she to do with this? Dietrich, this gun can do ugly damage. Tell Nina Campo to come in here. Nina! Yes, Mr. Dietrich? Come in here, please. Right away. Now, really, Gratz, what is this all about? As if you didn't know. Yes, Mr. Dietrich, what is... 
I was taken aback by Grotz's gun, too, Nina. I don't understand, Grotz. You can stop acting, both of you. Mr. Dietrich, what's the matter with Grotz? Nina, you really had me fooled. Every minute you spent with me was for him. Grotz, I... I don't know what you're talking about. You are just using me all the time. Please. I don't understand. Where are they, Nina? They? The books. Wolf's account books. The ones you stole from the closet in my hotel room. I didn't, Grotz. You must believe me, I didn't. A nice scheme Dietrich had, Nina. Using you to keep tabs on me. Very clever. Believe me, I didn't steal those books. You were the only one who knew where they were. And that's why you were so worried yesterday. You were afraid I'd hidden them somewhere else. No. And when I was out this morning, you came into my room. That's not true. Ask Mr. Dietrich. Tell him, Mr. Dietrich. Tell him I haven't left here all day. But, uh, Nina, you did. That's a lie. You know I wasn't out of here. Tell him the truth, Mr. Dietrich. Nina left the hotel this morning and was gone for an hour. Mr. Dietrich, he'll kill me. What a pity. Dietrich, it's a pity for both of you. Believe me, Graf, I had nothing to do with this. It's all quite new to me. Evidently, Nina has played us both for fools. It won't work, Dietrich. You're both going to die. Wait, Graz, don't shoot. Oh, I'm not going to shoot. What? I'm a perfectionist, remember. I deal in fire. Dietrich, you and Nina will have the same accident which disposed of wolf. You see this metal tube? An incendiary. All I do is release the cap, then lock this door from the outside. In no time at all, it will be over for you, too. Drop that gun, Grant. Never. Ah! Oh, oh, my hand. Get his gun, Peter. Beside that chair. <laughs> Got it, sir. Oh. He was going to kill us. Thank heavens you arrived. Whoever you are. Dietrich, I don't think you'll like who we are. What? This is David Harding, chief of the United States Counter Spies. Counter Spies? Those account books of Wolf. They're in the counter-spy New York field office, ready for presentation to the federal grand jury in the morning. What? Yes, Grants, we got them out of your room, not Nina Campo. I had an idea that their sudden absence would provide the evidence I wanted, and it did. Evidence, Grants, that will finish both your career and Dietrich's in the electric chair. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment... Remember, Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the courageous Come On. Our Counter Spy case on Thursday is one of the most unusual we've yet presented. In this case, you'll meet the girl who was good at being bad until she saw a blind spot. The promoter who believed the sword was mightier than the pen and used it to escape. And the extraordinary half-man who had enough courage for two ordinary men. Be sure to be tuned in on Thursday, day after tomorrow, to Case of the Courageous Come On, on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, written by Edward J. Adamson, and feature Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. Thank <laughs> you.